Hello. It's been a while. I've been busy a little bit lately, so I've been not finding as much time to stream as I would like to. But we got a few days this week that I have with a free schedule, so we're going to at least get some streams in so that we can get a little bit of a backlog going. So I have four decks that I want to show off today in this little short stream. As you can read by the title, the most hilarious one that I've come up with is a little thing I call Broom Foretold. <laughs> But, these are the decks that I plan to show off today. I have made, updated my Happy End deck, but we won't be playing that because it's going to take forever. So I have made a Kroxa deck, which is just Discard Tribal. I have made a Rat Tribal deck that is based off of one that MTG Jeff came up with, and I have tweaked it here and there. So it's basically a draw twice, get rats deck. And then we have a tribal elementals deck where I just shoved every elemental I had into a deck, and the win condition is you ramp into big spells, you play some, some uh, beanstalk giants that are like 12-12s or... 11 11s on turn 6 or 7. Yeah, because M20 is almost all elementals when you stop to think about it. And then this monstrosity that I just whipped up last night on a whim, where I wanted to play a. I have four copies of Doom Foretold. I wanted to build a deck around it. I'm like, what would be a fun deck with sacrificing involved? And then I thought, Sorcerer's Broom. Yes. Broom foretold. And then we got Kuranos in here just for some for a three drop for some hate. We got some Mortifies to kill some stuff. We have some other sacrifice synergies with Inquisitive Puppet, Guild Globe, and Golden Egg. And we're running quite a few sack lands with Evolving Wilds, Crypting Cave, and Fabled Passage. So we will be sacking stuff pretty often. We got some Stone Coils and Cards and some X-Card spells so we can just throw some cheap out 1-1s one if we need to sack something to a Doom Foretold. We can get one. We got some Meteor Golems for some late game removal. Ugin in just to, to make some of our stuff cheaper in the late game. And Ethereal Absolution, just so that I have a way to make my brooms a little bit bigger if I need them to be. Some Kaya's Wraths. And then we have Prison Realm and Glass Casket to get rid of some early game and late game threats. So let's jump right into this. This deck, honestly, is jank. But I've been winning with it surprisingly more than I thought I would. I expected to win maybe one out of every three games with this, if that. But I'd say its win rate is somewhere in closer to 40 or even 50%. But it's only had about six games of testing, so let's put it through its paces and see what we get today. Well, we have all of our colors in my opening hand, and we have three lands, and that's good enough for me. So I want that gone, so we're going to get rid of that. Glass Casket is a highly underrated card because one of the things that I've noticed with Eldraine is that this is probably, this is, pr oh, he might be playing Orzhov too. Because one of the problems that I have
with Eldraine is the format started to get broken with there's a lot of three mana or less spells that are way too powerful to be a three mana or less spell. Uh, that's annoying. So, let's get rid of his afterlife. And let's hopefully scry into something good. An inquisitive puppet. Now we can do better. Yeah, this is probably a mono black devotion deck, if I had to guess. Or it's just a Death Touch deck. He hasn't played a single creature that didn't have Death Touch yet. He's got to be getting pretty annoyed with how much control I'm laying out now. He killed my Kuranos. Oh, we found something without Death Touch. I think this is, might be a Vampire's deck. But with Death Touch, I guess. And we still have another removal spell. Now this will get him to bait out another removal spell for sure. I just love that this has Menace and Lifelink. That's such a good combo. And that's all of the Kuranoses in the deck. Let's uh, drop the egg. Come on, get me something good. Nice! That's an Ugin next turn. Looks like the stream disconnected. That's annoying. I'm going to have to splice that together. Or we might just cut this game out later on altogether. I still have the non-live footage, so it should be fine. Let's see if he has a murderous rider. He probably had a creature in his hand that he was saving. But now he knows I have another kill spell. <laughs> in the form of Ugin.
we'll draw into our ethereal absolution eventually. Oh, <laughs> we have so much removal. I know this is a bit late to say this, but first blood! <laughs> and now we just win slowly and painfully over time. Yes! Take one of my cards. Get rid of it. And now you know I have a board wipe. Oh, he has no clue what he just gave me. <laughs> we exhausted his resources. And I that's how you do it. Because I'm afraid I might not be able to recover the footage, we'll do another game with this broom foretold. Because I want to at least get a broomed copy to go off and play, or play Doom Foretold. Fingers crossed we don't lose any more connection. I don't know if I keep this hand. We're on a time clock here, so we might as well just YOLO. The broom! And this is one of the combo pieces for the broom. This works so well with the broom. And we have the Doom Foretold, and now we have some early game removal. So basically the reason I use the Broom is because it gives me something to benefit from all these sack outlets if I don't have the Doom Foretold. So he's going to think that I'm doing... Because I don't think anyone else has a Broom... A Orcerer's Broom Doom Foretold deck list. I don't think anyone else has one. If there is, I haven't seen it. Ooh, we got Satessan Champion. You know what we say to Satessan Champion, right? We say, have you heard of a Doom Foretold? And the thing is, we can create an infinite combo with this, because this next turn, when this sacks, I could pay three to get a copy of the Sorceress Broom, and then copy the... and then sack the original, but the copy still has the co the ability to clone itself. So we essentially have two good sack outlets. He's going to sacrifice his Wolf Willow Haven. And if he plays a 3 drop, we can just casket it. I can no longer stand by and watch. I've got it. Ah, oh, he got us. See, we have a fallback plan, and that fallback plan is Sorcerer's Broom.
one broom to rule them all. <laughs> oh, that's genius. I wanted to make a good sorcerer's broom deck, and I've tried before and failed, but I think this is the, the best broom deck that you can make that doesn't rely on, like, all the trail of crumbs and witch ovens. There was originally in the first draft of this deck the witch oven combo, but I decided against it. Just because I'm running black does not mean I need the, the damn cauldron familiar. Hmm. He's going to counterspell this, right? He isn't. If he thinks I have another Doom Foretold, he might start countering my stuff. Because I f think this is, this is a Simic Flash deck list if I've ever seen one. Come on. Flash in your wolfie. I know you want to. He's not going to flash in his wolfie to block. Okay. Oh, he's just going to scry. I guess he's looking for an answer. This is an expansion explosion deck, isn't it? And now we sack the Fabled Passage. We get a second broom. And let's get another white source. And we have another sack outlet to use if we need another broom. Hydroid Crisis, huh? Well, I got news for you, Hydroid Crisis. You have a CMC of two. Which means you're going to get casketed. And if you don't get casket, hit with the casket, we'll just Prison Realm you, because I doubt he has two counter spells. So, first off the casket. Does he counter? He does not. Which means that thing will re-enter the battlefield as a 0-0. Zero, zero. Hmm. 
this guy is probably going, I'm dying to brooms. This card is so bad. Why am I losing to brooms? <laughs> He just... Now everything has flash. Do you have anything in your hand that you can actually play? Oh, he's just going for mana multiplication. Joke's on you, bro. The copies still have the text that lets me copy. Do I have lethal? I think I have lethal. Yeah, I win. I just win here. Let's get rid of your mana multiplications. And you died to brooms. <laughs> You're a wizard, Danny. I mean, you're a sorcerer, Danny. <laughs> Woo! I love brooms. So I think that was as successful as a run we're ever going to get. So yeah, here's... So the, yeah, this deck list is more or less a meme. What I would recommend to fix it up is run an extra Ethereal Absolution if you have one, or a second Ugin. And you could run two of the Stone Coils if you have them. I only have the one, so I ran a second Ugin's con Conjurant. As for the land base, it's pretty simple. We're running two Castle Ardenvales because having some 1-1 Chump Blockers is nice, and a, a card draw engine in a pinch if you need it with the like, Castle Lockwain. Although Field of Ruin is back in the format, so these cards that used to be considered really, really powerful are no longer as powerful. So next up on our fun list is probably going to be the Mad Ratter. We also have this deck here. We don't talk about this deck here. <laughs> so the Mad Ratter deck basically runs off of Piper of the Swarm and Mad Ratter. And the goal is to draw two cards a turn whenever you can. There's no fun with that deck at all. The deck is all counter spells. It wins by making people concede or you mill them. <laughs> There's a reason that the photo on the box is negate. So I think we'll turn one Burglar into the Piper of the Swarm so that that 1-1 one, one Burglar Rat is a 1-1 one, one Burglar Rat with Menace. Priest of the Forgotten Gods is a nice combo piece in this deck as well. Oh, and we can play the Castle Embrith. We got our third land. Never punished. Actually, I get punished all the time. 
most of the YouTubers, I'm assuming, are just cutting out the games where they get horribly, horribly beaten. Damn it. There it is again, Mono Black Devotion. Let's take away a card from hand. Picture your Yarox Fun Looker. I know you have it. Oathsworn Knight. Uh oh. That's exactly what I didn't hope to see. This rat deck is fun to play. However, this is the only rat in standard right now, so it's a very weak tribe. And Mad Ratter is an extremely, extremely bad card. It is a 1-2 for 4. I mean, look at this thing. You get... T this thing should have at least been a... A 1-3, at the least. Or they should have made it 2 mana cheaper. If they were going to give it that power and toughness. This should have been at least a 2 or 3 mana card, at most. Because when you really think about it... At its absolute cheapest, this is a uh, plus two power for the rats. So it's basically it's a th it's a three four for six mana in the best case scenario. I think I'm just dead. But I'll play it out. Yeah, this card's broken. It's like one mana for a... This is a one mana one two that does all these other things. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
Now, th if he doesn't just cast a kill spell here, this will be a hilarious play. I'm still dead. But let's see if he sees it. <laughs> I'm going to be more favorable in this trade, my friend. And you get a zombie. So I'm going to live to see another turn, but I'm not going to live to see much after that. This rat deck will win almost maybe one out of every six games, if that. He thinks that I might have another Death Toucher, so... He's playing it safe. And I'm just dead in the air, so it doesn't matter. Mono Black Devotion caked us. It coked us. We're doomed. We're dead. I'm working on a mono black devotion deck, but I'm not having a lot of success with it because I need a lot of wild cards just to get certain things to make it work, which right now requires Erebos. One of the problems with this deck is I do not have a lot of removal outside of giving things Death Touch. Which I can only do four times reliably. I think I have every mountain in the deck in my opening hand. Uh, every one of them but one. The, the perfect storm of what could happen with this deck is you get the Mad Ratter out, you get the Priest of the Forgotten Gods out, and then every turn you sack two rats. That's the perfect storm. And then Cavalcade of Calamity is in here just so that the rats hurt more. Uh, please sacrifice your creature. And because I cast, I said please, he, I am now immune to the counter spell. Didn't say please. Rankle. 
He's gonna make me discard. Raya is also an interesting combo with the because she could turn into a one a, a draw engine each turn. I might just have to concede because I don't have any feasible way to remove Rankle. I have, I think, two removal spells in the entire deck. And I had already cast one of them. But here's the deck list if you're curious. This is a deck that was designed solely to be fun, but it's not fun because it's horrible. There's just not enough tools to make rats good in standard right now. So it turns into a draw twice deck that if you don't get set up, you can't draw twice, you can't do anything what the deck wants to do. So it's just a bunch of half combos that you are either doing the rat combo or the draw twice combo, or nothing. And then you usually die on turn four because the aggro is so aggressive right now that running any form of combo is just asking to lose. That, however, we're going to jump into our last little deck exhibition that I had planned for today besides discard tribal is this monstrosity. Where we are running elementals, all the, the cheap two drops. We've got run away together so that I can replay elementals triggering the Risen Reef. We got Jaya's Greeting just for some cheap scry and three damage. Lava Coil for some four damage removal. Bond of Flourishing, Neoform so I can turn all of these two drops into my Risen Reefs. And then the two win conditions of the deck are either Electro Dominance or Mass Manipulation. That being said, you may occasionally smack somebody with a giant, but it's not going to happen often. With a very complicated and complex mana base that I am constantly retweaking because when you're running three colors, getting your color fixes are very inconsistent. But this is a pretty cheap deck of mostly uncommons, so this is a deck that you could very easily make. Because I'm not running a lot of the very expensive stuff, like I'm not running Omnaths, because he's a mythic. But yeah, if you have him, throw him in there. Be my guest. Um, I have four copies of Chandra's Phoenix. You could run that if you really wanted to. If you have a, another copy of Mirror March, I'd recommend that as well. I think we mulligan because we don't have green mana. Okay, now this is a winning hand here. We can put one of the Neoforms away. We don't need two of them. Omneth is not broken. The problem is they've printed way too many elementals in M20. Like, literally, the, the Cavaliers that are, are just five elemental knights. One for each color. For five mana.
And we drew another Neoform anyway. So the first thing to do is we get our combo on the field. And we have an elemental to draw next turn. Nice. Oh, and a deer kraken. Now that's a deck I want to build that I haven't got the rares to do, but I want to build it. Let's thin the deck a little bit. So we have all our colors, so the goal is just to get four islands so that we can start playing our... So that we can start playing our mass manipulation, and you know that I'm taking that as soon as I can. Oh, he's got two of them. So we need to get to six mana and fast. So let's start getting towards that mass manipulation. How does he block? There we go. And that gives me an elemental to play next turn. And we set him back a turn. Oh, and there it is. We win now, boys. Give me that Nadia Kraken. Play something fun. Play something else so I can steal, because I can do one, two, three, four, and then I have... Let's see, one, two, three... Or if I can get a land out next turn, I could steal two things. He might just quit the game once I take this. There we go, here we go, and... Oh, it's a tap land. Oh, well. I guess we're casting this for one. I'll take your Kraken. So we killed his other Kraken. Oh, he is a Thassa now. Glad we got the Kraken when we did. That being said, it would lose its counters. He's gonna delete one of his tokens. And then we'll just play a 9-9. Does he respond with a counterspell? Unless your controller pays four. This combo might be better than his combo.
So first off, we kill the Krasis, right? That's the smart move. Then we play a Creeping Trailblazer. And then we do this. He has all this mana, and he's not casting anything good. And I will eventually draw into my second mass manipulation, and I will steal his Thassa. And with Thassa, with this grief, is just going to be great. I really hate how broken Thassa is for four mana. The ability to blink something every single turn is so broken. I run into so many decks where I think he's just trying to draw into uh, Agent of Treachery, I believe is what he's looking for. And as soon as he casts it, I lose. So I have to kill him before he does that. Does he counter? Frilled Mystic. So we'll attack with that, we'll attack with that, attack with that, we'll attack with that, we'll attack with that. We'll Now let's see what he does. I think if he plays the Agent of Treachery, I still win here. Because he doesn't have enough blockers to block 5 damage. Yep. I'm pretty sure he was playing a Thassa Agent of Treachery deck. I think that's what he was, and we just went faster. We beat Simic Flash, and that just goes to show how broken Tribal Elementals is. And he even got two good counterspells off that, in normal circumstances, would have won him the game. But he was already too far behind. Because I just ramped completely out of control. Risen Reef is another good example of a card that should be 4 mana. I'd argue its only reason it's balanced is that it's a 1-1. One, one. It's the only reason. It's a 3 mana 1-1. One, one. And there's so many ways to kill a 3 mana 1-1. One, one. That being said though, in green, and in, unless you have a fight spell, there's probably no way he was going to do that. We don't have any red, but that's not an issue. We'll just enter that tapped. Cavalier of Thorns is like the weird include I have in this deck. It's just in here so in case I need to get a Risen Reef back. Red mana source, please. There's my red mana source. Oh, is this a five color deck? Now the real question is, is does he have a shock? And I have a question of, do I ramp next turn, or do I go for the draw? I don't think I need the draw card. So we'll go for the mana. Also, reach is nice. So let's 
put the gate down. Let's start blocking his flyer. Let's put another Risen Reef out, because we can. So now I guess we drop the Cloudkin Seer and the Cloud Valier of Thorns, because we don't have the ability to cast that. So yeah, it's what, turn four? We have uh, five mana, three creatures, and a full hand. He's sitting on an Ionize, if I had to guess. And he's just going to quit there. I have a full grip. And I think he's just playing... I don't know what he was playing. But he gave up real quick. Which moves us to my last and favorite display. Tribal Discard. I got really lucky and ended up getting three of these in boosters. But this is my favorite card that was added to all of Theros. And honestly, despite how much people say it's bad, they underestimate the escape four mana cost. So we run Tribal Discard, Yarex Fen Lurker, Thrill of Possibility, just this gets cards in graveyard. This puts two cards in your graveyard, which makes it really good with escape. So the perfect turn opening hand is you have Kroxa, you have Gorging Vulture, and then that just means you can turn two, cast Kroxa, and then turn four, cast Kroxa. Some Carnivals and Carnages, in case we need to get some early game 1-1 one, one re removal. Those, uh... Vampire, as that 1-1 one, one lifelink death toucher is really annoying, and this gets rid of it. And we have a decent amount of removal with Plague Crafter, because he'll put himself in the graveyard, or one of your other creatures in the graveyard, which helps feed the escape cost. A card that I'm considering putting in here is uh, Aspect of Lamprey, but we're not running a lot of creatures, so I didn't feel like it was necessary. And the only thing that would be a good target for it is Kroxa himself, because giving him a 6-6 with lifelink is pretty cool. We have Rankle. He's just very good for utility. Price of Fame. If you have it, I would replace this with uh, Eat into Extinction, but I don't have any copies of that. Davriel, because what's a discard deck without Davriel? Murderous Rider, because it's a somewhat recurrable spell with the amount of fetch lands we're running. You could potentially graveyard it and then draw it again. Now this is one of the win conditions that actually wins surprisingly often because once this guy hits the field, if they don't kill it immediately, nobody has a hand for the rest of the game. This is a card that's really cool, but as a commander player, it makes me sad to see that it's opponent's plural hand. Which means if you're playing this in a multiplayer game, this is just a 5-mana zero, 0-0. Zero, or a 6-mana zero, 0-0. Zero. Castle Locked Wayne. We're not running the other castle because we don't run as much red. Ritual Soot is a card that I'm considering taking out. And I would probably recommend swapping it for Finale of Eternity, but this is just really good to have for getting rid of tokens as well as Rakdos Lock, it can help refill the land and also puts itself in the graveyard. That being said, though, Enemy of Enlightenment 
is a turn six play on average. By turn six, with this deck list I have here, I can have most people... By the time I'm able to play it, most people will have one card in hand. So in a four-player commander game, that means he'd only have minus three, minus three on average. Which is still bad. Because that means by the time the players tick around, if they decide to not play cards, he dies. I honestly think he's better than Uro, and I've had a match against an Uro deck where I actually stomped the Uro deck into the ground. It was a complete back-and-forth battle, but the thing is, I was able to swing my 6-6 into his 6-6 and recur it more often than not, whereas he was just drawing cards and gaining life, but not actually being able to smack back. And Elspeth's Nightmare is just good early game removal. Uh, I want a red source, so we're good. Ooh, this is a much better hand. This is exactly what I said you want. You want Kroxa and Gorging Vulture. We will get rid of Davriel, because he doesn't help us much. The best thing about throwing out Kroxa on turn 2 is you potentially do 3 life damage, because they might not want to throw away a, a card early on. Is that a Shatter the Sky? Yeah. Now if we draw a red source, he's just coming back out in 2 turns. That's a lot of red sources in there now. Oh, I hate the lion. Although this is fun. Aha! And we've now it's turn four, and we have seven cards in graveyard, which means if we had gotten our land drops, he would have been out. Ooh, that's bad. That's bad news, bears. If he's smart, he sacrificed that. So, we're having the standard, there's 25 lands in the deck, but the game refuses to give me any of them. My favorite thing to happen in Magic. In a real-life scenario, when you actually shuffle the cards, if you have 20 lands in your deck, you're consistently drawing a, a land every three turns. We're at, like, six draws in, and we haven't drawn shit. No blocks. And we draw the wrong land. We'll double block his phoenix if we have to. Unless he's got a pacifism in hand. I'm hoping that he's... I'm basically banking on the fact that he doesn't have another enchantment. He did. And there's no enchantment removal in black. Are we dead? I think we're dead. You imagine how good we would have been at six mana, though.
I needed a removal spell that I didn't have, and I needed land that the game refused to give me. Actually, now that I think about it, I have gotten a card from a booster pack recently that I can add to the deck. And it's a land, no less. I have a Temple of Malice. We'll take out a Swamp. Put that in. I have a sideboard. Why do I have... Oh, that's right. In case the best of three. Eh. We'll drop one of these and add... Oh, Evolving Wilds, maybe? Unknown Shores. There we go. 25 lands. Now watch us do the standard thing of you put a 25th land in the deck and you magically draw nothing but them. Because we had the perfect hand and lost. I'm just not going to do that. I'm not going to mulligan again to a worse hand. I really, really both love and hate that magic has devolved into mono color. You either play mono red or mono black right now. That's pr the, more or less the meta. And you can win with mono white. If you have the God Hand, where you just have a 1-1 one, one Wife Linker for one, a Johnny's Pride Mate, and then um, Heliod. And then if no one has a removal spell to get rid of those three things, you win. It's a strategy that I don't like banking on, but it wins way too often. And I'm going to get punched for a 4, because I don't have a removal spell to kill that. Oh, hey, Davriel. I love when I get both copies of a card that doesn't help me win the game yet. This is a great example of a card that's fair and balanced. But as a result of it being fair and balanced, everything else in the set it came in is not fair and balanced, so it sucks. So we're just going to take our lumps. Hopefully we take something good out of his hand. Reeve's soul. Is he going to smack me for four? Let's get a red source. Let's uh, see if I can put some cards in my graveyard with Surveil, another mechanic that works really good with Escape. 
one more card in the graveyard, and we can cast him. So he'll be turn out on turn 5. Probably 6. We'll get him out of turn 6, which is not as early as I would have liked to have gotten him out. So we will... Let's say each player discards a card. And I will discard Davriel. Ooh. I want to build a deck around her, but I just haven't gotten copies of her yet. She seemed like a fun deck to build a Brawl deck around. And now, we escape. Sack lands are really good with Kroxa and escape. Oh, he discarded a land, which means he probably has a kill spell in his hand. Or a death toucher. Because, of course, he has a Death Toucher. And he had Death Toucher and a Kill Spell. But we have a way to get more cards in our graveyard. So... Matters not, it does not. No and this will bait him into attacking. And now the Death Touch is off the board. Were you counting the cards in my graveyard? You should have been. All I need to do is to get punched through one time. Ooh, that's bad. Yep, that's right. You need a blocker up. Okay, so we're gonna Plague Crafter here. And that's risky. So next, we attack in, because he will have to block with something.
and then we give him the stress of knowing that he will lose the Piper next turn. Struggling. If he top decked a kill spell here, that's amazing. Fun while it lasted, boys. And whoops. That just cost me the game. I forgot to attack first. Well, that happens, but you get the point. Oh, hey, that means we get another pack. We get the Eldraine packs, because Eldraine is broken. More of the Spark is arguably broken. Brazen Borrower. Another broken card. I feel like they have they've gotten into the bad problem of they think a card is is fair if it's rare. And I really hate that that's really become what magic is these days. Like if you come to a, a table, even if your deck is jank as hell, if it's all rare or better cards, you odds are will beat even the most well finely tuned of uncommon decks. Or as uh, Commander's Quarters players might call them, focused decks. But we'll give this another fair shot. Because I actually enjoy this. I actually got to gold in, comp in ranked with this deck. I think I got all the way up to gold 2. So the deck has had its fair share of wins and losses. Double Croxa. And we're probably going up against Mono Red Aggro, which means we're probably too slow to win. Or it's Mono Red Elementals, or it's Mono Red Chandra. Who knows what it is? But I'm betting it's Mono Red with sleeves like these. Gotta love that they consider Legendary a nerf. Because you can only have one. Could you imagine putting, like, a Helm of the Host on this? It'd be hilarious. Oh, he has green? That means this is gruel. Ugh. Gross. So we'll make you get rid of that. Because I don't want you to have, like, another... Be dropping two of those and they're buffing each other, and I'm taking four first strike damage every turn. Oh, hell to the no. Well, we lost. Make this quick. Well, this game was fun while it lasted. I've only ran into this card once, and never with an escape deck. That's why we run multiple copies, though. I have no physical way to remove this in the entire deck, because I can't, don't have the wild cards to be grabbing Eat to Extinction. But we have other ways to win. 
If we draw mana, that is. But he's just gonna chip me away. He's gonna run out of cards in my graveyard to exile. I'm just gonna have to start exiling his own. You're not going to get that devotion up. If you hit 7, I'm going to probably delete the game. And I'm nervous about what card you have in hand, so let's make you get rid of it. Storm's Wrath. gonna buff it with the castle or buff it with an infuriate is probably what's happening here nope colossus i think we just lose now yep hard countered get you see, gotta love mythic cards I know that the game is tries to make it so you get ideal matchmaking, but I feel like it's biased to people who spend money on the game. Because I'm betting money, if I spent money on the game, I would probably win the greater majority of matches because I bet the matchmaking would start to be more favorable to me based on proportion to how much money I put. I have no evidence or proof, but it's a suspicion I've always had of free-to-play games. I wish I had god cards.
gods are overrated, but if you're not playing a color that has enchant removal, it's essentially a you lose play. If you don't have a physical way to remove in the enchantment, you lose, is the problem I have with the god cards. And there is a card in my colors that gets rid of it, but the problem is I don't have that card. So these are what I have that I get. Let's see. No. 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 Target creature gets minus six, minus six. No. Ooh, maybe I should start putting these in. Hmm. Yeah. But then I don't have planeswalker removal. This is the one that you want to be running. You want to be running Eat to Extinction. Because it's specifically designed to just get rid of any creature or planeswalker that's in your way. Final death is five mana to get rid of one. We'll put two of these in. Oops. Final death. Will we get to five mana to cast it? Who knows? Now we just added six removal spells to our deck. Now let's see how well we fare, because removal is the way to win, right? You can't lose if there's nothing that can hit you. Kolgara. Kolgara. <laughs> Hello. Are you ready to have a bad time? This is a token deck. This is a Selesnia token deck. I 
I hate this card. So, all those removal spells we just added, and we got none of them. And now every bird is in the graveyard. We need a red source. The mask is scary, but underneath, but don't think you'll be needing that. <laughs> uh, he got rid of a spark harvest, which tells me he has another one. Let's see if he wastes it on Davriel, a creature that. Ah, uh, Divine Visitation decks. I don't have a way to stop that. Nope. I quit. <laughs> There's just not enough enchantment removal in red and black. I just can't win. You need to be playing white-green if you want to remove enchantments. There's that new, uh, what was it? That new Fracka one where you can force someone to sacrifice an enchantment. And we took a land out, which means we now go back to not having three lands in our opening hand, which means there's one land every five cards. Or every four cards is a land instead of every three, because that's how math works, right? 40% uh, of your deck is land, therefore every fourth card is land. That's not how math works, but that's how math works in MTG Arena. removal anymore. Not a removal spell. You see what I mean, though, how easy it is to get someone down to zero cards by turn six, though. Man, this Elspeth's Nightmare is just turning into a more and more dead card.
I lost way too quickly. Uh, you just can't win sometimes. What is that black card that I need to be starting to add into every black deck? What is it called? Farika? No. Farika? Well, I guess we gotta look through every single one till we find it. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Is it a four mana spell? Inevitable end I might start using. But I don't have enough copies. I have two un uncommons. I could start putting it in there. There it is. Farika's Liberation. It's a common. Nixless cruelty can go away. What do we replace what I just taken out with? I need more creatures. of Enforcer. Hmm. I guess we could put the Burglar Rats back in. Gorging Vulture. Maybe something in red. We don't have enough red in this deck.
What's a good creature to throw in for red? Rimrock Knight, maybe. Oh, I know. Robber of the Rich. Yeah. That works. And a Reveler, just to refresh the hand if we need it. That is not a hand I want to keep. Final death is so late game. This is another example of a card that is overpowered because it's mythic. Please block, please block, please block. He's re is he reading the card? If it was a Clothis deck, he would have played her. A Clo Clothis is a deck that I want to build, but again, she's a mythic card I don't have, which means the odds of me getting her are low. Because the next mythic card that I'm trying to stockpile is for my Hakdos deck list that I'm building, which is mostly a uh, made up of uh, what's it called? Outlaws Revelry or something? I can't remember. Top deck to kill spell would be real nice right about now. Not running blue, so now it just means big creatures with haste. And that's another loss because the deck just does not give me anything other than land.
Uh, sometimes I feel like the universe is really out to get me. I've never lost this many games in a row with this deck. This deck has gotten me to gold and competitive. And it's just been loss after loss after loss today. Oh, we got a mulligan here. Mono red mulligan. He's not going to play anything bigger than 3 CMC in this for a while. We just need to start getting blockers out there. I wonder if he's going to waste the wand to put that in there. The other reason that this is good is because it mills you into your escape monsters. Does he have an infuriate in hand now? I guess not. I feel like meme lording, so let's just do this. Bye, board state! This time, things are coming up Millhouse, and we're not even milling. We're just playing late game aggro.
Oh, another Dawn of Hope. Now I can start putting those in all my white decks. A card that's considered to be necessary to have a functioning white deck. I think we'll call it here. Pharaoh's Constructed. Oh. Another time, maybe. Mm, thanks for stopping by, David. I'm probably going to cut this up and put it on the YouTubes. This will probably be a nice three or four episodes. Just to get a nice backlog going for the non-Twitch viewers. That being said, we do need to start upping the subscriber count. Because I'm sure I'm going to get dropped from Twitch sooner or later. Until then, bye-bye.